Hey, welcome back to Miscellaneous Materials Part 2 with your host Sam Eskew with Everything Electrical here on YouTube. This morning I have an opportunity to shoot the Miscellaneous Part 2 video I've been wanting to do. And right now we are sitting in my garage and I have all this stuff just laying around. Uh, it's not as organized and as clean as I'd like for it to be. But it's good enough. <laughs> so the truth comes out. Sam's not a super perfect organized guy all the time. No big deal though. We're just in our we're just in my garage and uh I have all this stuff laying around. I wanted to put it out there for the people who can benefit from it. I know there's quite a few of you guys. Um, we're gonna go through this stuff. It's for the for the new new guys. No, it's for anybody really, anybody that wants to watch. But I know the people that are trying to learn what's what in the electrical business or trade um, can benefit the most. So for you guys, that's what it's about. See, I got all this stuff here. And I haven't really planned this out at all. I just kind of just flipped the camera on and it's like, all right, we're going to do part two. So <clears throat> I don't really have a plan here. Um, it's just me in the garage with all the stuff. And it's just about as real as it gets. Um, so I'm going through and just kind of showing you everything I got here. What's in my garage. And, uh, We're going to get started here on the shelf, and I'm just going to go through the materials. Um, some of the stuff maybe repeats from part one, and you may see it again in part three, but, you know, I heard somewhere it takes up to five times to see and hear something for, for it to really sink in. So I'm going to do my best to not spend too much time on things that I think I may have already covered, but it's very possible it could happen. We're, gonna, we're just going to do the best we can. And right now I'm going to start on the shelf where I keep a lot of my stuff. And we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, right here on the very top left corner. This is known as an LB. That's an LB. And this is threaded. It could be for EMT. Uh, there are ones that aren't threaded, like I have here, that would work for a PVC. And what you would use this guy for would be to like come up, so you have a service blow, and you got a conduit coming up into the bottom of this, and then this would sit against the wall, and then this would actually, the top part there would penetrate the wall, with the conduit going in. So it's a way to make a clean 90 or uh, usually you see them on services for the power going into the to a sub panel. Whoa, what was that? All right, so that's an LB. This is what's known as an offset nipple, and it's a way that if it's for service, if you have like a meter and a panel side by side, and the meter hole is at one point and the panel is like it's off, this offset nipple will turn to allow you to uh, make it work. <laughs> basically, the, it, basically a straight nipple wouldn't work because the uh, two points of the holes are at different elevations from the back of the wall, so if you were in that situation, you would have to use an offset nipple, and that's what that is. Um, what else I got? Okay, this is just a straight, rigid nipple. It's like a two inch straight rigid nipple and you can see it's just a piece of conduit for connected panels like I was explaining with the offset nipple but in this, with using this you would the holes would be in line so you could just put a straight piece between them and that's a straight rigid nipple okay now we're gonna go to the second bin here I got just some junk this is a this is a fan rheostat for uh, 
controlling the different speeds on for fan. Uh, 1.25 amp max. Um, don't get a rheostat confused with the dimmer. For fan, it's known as a rheostat. Dimmers are dimmers. <clears throat> um, here's some just a socket for temporary lighting. What you do is you this piece unscrews right here on the top, and you can run a piece of Romex through the middle of it. <clears throat> and there's like little clamp, uh, teeth in there that will dig into the wire, and that gives you the power. You put a light bulb in there, and you put a card like this. So that, here's a better example. Okay, see how they have that wire in there? Uh, that's giving the power. You screw a light bulb in, and you put a guard on there. And what that is is just temporary power. You see them in like commercial buildings and places like that. Temporary lighting. Um, here is a looks like a 30 or 40 amp receptacle. I don't can't really tell, but that's for like a, uh, what the hell is that for? I don't know man, it's a four wire, four prong plug for something. It might even be three phase, I don't know. Um, we're just going to move on to the next bin, and I got some rigid couplings in here. Rigid coupling, and what that is for, it's kind of like this. If you have a, you can take a rigid coupling, coupling, and a threaded nipple. You can screw that in. If you were like trying to go into, a, if you're working on a box or something, I've seen these in like Time Warner boxes where you like trying to go from one side to the other or say so you have a panel on the outside of the metal box and it's like inside the box you're trying to uh, run a wire you can use this piece to take that threaded nipple <clears throat> you make your hole and you can put it through the, the inside of the can and then into the panel and then you can put a locking on that and then you can screw your MC connector into this which will allow you to take your MC anywhere in the box um, not very often you see those. I've I've worked a lot with them in uh, Time Warner Time Warner cable boxes and I guess things like that is where you'd where you'd see those. Have some more offset nipples here. Beam clamp. That's for attaching to red iron and dropping down all thread. This is a three quarter flex ninety. Um, this is what is known as a um, chase nipple. Chase nipple is for if you have two boxes side by side, you can just put that right through and thread it up. Bam, you're good to go. Some more rigid nipples in there. This is what is known as a grounding bushing. It's like a plastic bushing, except for you run your ground through there, and that will It'd be like going on to the nipple, like that, uh, wrong sizes, but you get the idea. You can run your ground wire through there, and that will ensure that your rigid nipple is grounded. Okay, some more chase nipples here. This is a, this is a Romex connector for putting Romex through. Um, here I have some plastic bushings. Plastic bushings there. Um, these are Unistrut L's for working with Unistrut. You can uh, use these a lot of different ways. We'll get in more into Unistrut later on. But plastic bushings, this is just to thread onto the rigid nipples in the panels so you don't scrape your wires up going across them. Alright. Um, more like little L things in there. Okay, all good. We're gonna go down to the bottom. Or the next shelf down. 
and this is just the most basic stuff. Half inch EMT coupling. Half inch EMT connector. Three quarter, um, three quarter strap. <laughs> no, sorry, three eight strap. This is an MC strap, three eight strap. Half inch EMT strap. Three quarter straight CarFlex connector. Three quarter 90 degree CarFlex connector. Half inch 90 degree CarFlex connector. Half inch straight CarFlex connector. Half inch metal flex connector. That's for the metal flex. This is an MC connector, pop in type. These are expensive, but they're nice. And here's a double barrel pop in type for having two MCs into one hole. Half inch EMT rain tight connector. Half inch EMT rain tight coupling. That's for running your metal EMT pipe on the outside. Compression couplings to keep the water out. Keep it dry. Here I have the caddy bang ons. This is a this is a 90 degree. Let's see if I have a straight here. This is a straight. So see how that goes straight on. And it's at a 90, two types. 90 inch straight. Looks like I got some three quarter EMT straps there. Um, I have unit stretch straps here. Put straps on Unistrut. Three quarter EMT coupling. Three quarter EMT connector. This is uh, this is what is known as soap for putting. You put it on your wires before you run it through your conduits. Um, Basically, it's like a lubrication that will make the wire slide through the conduit a bit easier. Uh, must have on big pulls. Here I have an anti-rattle MC strap for if you have MC running along the walls. And you put that in there, or you put that down on the MC, strap to the stud, keeps it tight so there's no, no rattling, hence the name anti-rattle. These are bat wing MC straps for if you have MC running up in your ceiling and you have your uh, grid wire, like ceiling grid wire, that an electrician will, will need to uh, run his grid wire independent from the grid that's wire that's supporting the ceiling tile or that grid. Anyhow, this, this bat wing attaches to that for your MC wire. Here I have just I have some screws and stuff. I guess we'll get into it. Um, looks like here I have uh, three eighths nuts. Three eighths nuts. Here's some quarter inch, quarter inch nuts. Here I have some long sleeve anchors. Long sleeve anchors for attaching to like concrete walls, things like that. Um, <clears throat> here's some half inch nuts. All these nuts. All right, here we go with bolts. Uh, these are these are quarter inch uh, bolts. Your long self tapper screws are known as tech screws. Your self tappers. That's for drilling into metal.
Here's some little, these are pan head screws. <clears throat> pan head, pan head screws, or sometimes I call them tag screws. I know that's not the politically correct term, but uh, I call like, you need to go your tech, which is your 5 sixteenths head, tech screws, and then tag screws, which are like the little pan heads. Uh, I know that's not the proper correct term, but the guys that I work with, everybody knows what I'm talking about. When I say that, so that's what I like to call them. Um, I think everyone's got little things like that that aren't politically correct. Anyhow, these are some more quarter-inch nuts. You got some long uh, 632 screws here. Here's some here's some short tech screws. A minute ago we were looking at the the longer ones. These are the short kind. And then I have a bunch of three eighths washers here. Little stuff like that. I think yeah, half inch washers. So that that's pretty much that there. There's some three eighths bolts in there. We're going to move down to the second shelf, and I have some connectors in here. Oh, here's a little point. Um, these these connectors, these are known as, uh, shit, what are they? <laughs> uh, man, I'm having a total brain fart, but... Anyway, let me show you what I'm trying to talk about here. They have, uh, there's two types here. Oh, okay. These are steel. No, these are steel. This is a steel fitting. And this is another type. I'm trying to think of what the name term is. I can't remember. It's like, uh, Shit, man, I, I can't. I'm on tape, but I can't even think of this right now. <laughs> but anyways, there, there's two types. The steel is uh, it's a little bit more shiny. It's a little more modern, and these are like the older type. Uh, I I really only deal with steel. I just have these. They were given to me. Uh, can't think of it right now, but there are there are two different types. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> anyway. Do the best I can. I'll, I'll think of that as soon as I turn the camera off. Um, here's some jack chain. That's for uh, hanging, up, hanging down like fluorescent lights, things like that. Here's some that is uh, a tie wire, uh, tying like tie things up with that. You can get real creative with that stuff. There's so many things you can do with that tie wire. And you like found that on the ground. It's all rusted. Um, these are nailing anchors. And these work good if you're like if you have a concrete ceiling. You can uh, you drill out your holes and then you take your hammer and bam, you just hammer them up with that. <coughs> Easy done. Cleaned up. What I have here is uh, lower mat. Uh, 